In this video we're going to be looking at thirds and how we multiply, divide and simplify them. The first thing we're going to look at though is what a third is. The next thing we're going to look at is multiplying thirds and then simplifying our answers. The third thing we're going to look at is dividing thirds and then finally we're going to look at how you go between um, simplified thirds and unsimplified thirds. So the first thing we're going to look at is what is a third. So here are some numbers inside square root signs. Some of them are thirds, some of them are not. The ones that are thirds are the ones that don't have um, a square root that gives a rational number. So the square root of 4, that is not a third because it does give us a number. The square root of 4 is 2, whereas the square root of 15 is not quite 4, it's going to be 3.8, 3.9, um, because root 16 is 4. So this one's a third. This one isn't, because that one also simplifies to be 3. Root 2 is a third. Root 3 is a third. And root 100 is not a third, because that simplifies to be 10. Now, rather than working out what root 2 is, which is 1.4 something, these numbers go on forever and it's a irrational number so there's no pattern either. It's easier, rather than writing the decimal, to keep it in its third form and then to calculate with that. So we're now going to move on to looking at how we would multiply thirds together. So here we have three examples. The first one doesn't actually contain thirds, but it's just to give us the concept. So, when you have two thirds, we have root 4 times root 100. We know that if we actually simplified this, this would be 2 times 10. Which should give us an answer of 20. But if we do it using the thirds, when we do four time, root 4 times root 100, that gives us root 4 times 100, which is root 400, and the root of 400 is 20. So that's the method. We multiply the two numbers, and then we simplify it if possible. So if we look at the second one, we've got root 5 times root 15. So the first step is to multiply the two numbers together. So we have 5 times 15, which is 75. We now can simplify this third. These two numbers are both not square numbers, so they won't have a square root that we can easily identify. Whereas root 75 has a factor that is a square number. So 75 breaks up into... 25 times 3. 25 times 3 would give us 75. And we know that the square root of 25 times 3, sorry, the square root of 3 will give us root 75. So the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 3 is 3. So we've simplified part of the third, and this is how we write it. 5 times root 3. We don't have to put the multiply sign. It's like algebra where you have 5x. That would just be 5 times x. This is 5 root 3. 5 times root 3. Let's move on to the final example. However, I'm going to change this root 4 because that's not actually a third. I'm going to change that to root 8. So again, we're going to have to simplify when we do this one. So we've got root 8 times root 14. And when we do 8 times 14, that's going to be, well, the root of 8 times 14, which is root 112. Now, 112 splits up into root 16 times root 7. And 16 is a square number, so we can simplify it. So the square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 7. I'd like to do one more example, but this time 
rather than two thirds being multiplied together, I'd like to multiply a number with a third. And I'm going to show you what that looks like if we're going to get it in the form of root something. So we can't just multiply 3 and root 7 together. They need to be the same. We either need to make 7 a, a number or we need to make 3 into a, a square root. Um, the easiest way to do this is to say, what is 3 in terms of a square root? Well, 3 is the square root of 9. And then we can times that with root 7 which will give us root 63. If we were to simplify this, this would come back to 3 root 7, but we wanted it in this form here, so I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, let's move back now to um, dividing thirds. So it's pretty much the same idea. Um, first one I'm going to use again to help get the concept. So. We've got root 100 divided by root 25. So if I did root 100, that would give me 10. And if I was going to divide that by root 25, that would give me um, 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So if we do this using the thirds, we have root 100 divided by root 25, so 100 divided by 25 is the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is just 2. Let's do the same for the second one. We've got root 72 divided by root 2. 72 divided by 2 is going to be 36, so let's just do that. And then the square root of 36 is 6. So we can simplify that to just be 6. And then finally the third one. We have root 288 divided by root 6. So that's the square root of 288 divided by 6. Which gives us root 48. And then root 48, that's got factors that are square, um, 3 times 16 will give us 48, so 16 is a square number, we can simplify that to become 4, so that's root 3 times 4, which we would write as 4 root 3. Now I want to do one more example, um, but this time it's including a whole number, so let's say we had root 40 divided by 2, the answer there is not going to be the square root of 20. We have to turn this whole number into um, a third. So that's going to give us root 40 over root 4. And now we can do 40 divided by 4, which is 10. So the answer there is the square root of 10. We can't simplify this 10 because there are no factors of 10 that are square numbers. So now the final part is to look at how we would reverse a simplified third. And this is very similar to what we've been talking about when we're multiplying a whole number and a third together. In fact, it's, it's pretty much identical. So we have 3 root 10, which is essentially 3 times root 10. Um, and as we've said before, we cannot multiply these two together in this form. We need to change this 3 into a third. So we'll get root 9 times root 10, which is root 90. Let's do the second one. We've got 4 times root 5, which is going to be root 16 times root 5. Remember... The square root of 16 is 4, so six, root 16 and 4 are the same number. And when we do 16 times 5, that gives us root 80. And then the last one, we've got 7 times root 6. So 7 times root 6. The square root of 49 is 7. 
and we're timesing that by 6, which gives us root 294.